And we're live. We are back on the dance floor, people. The Unlaced Podcast. What a start to the year we've had. Uh, last few episodes, obviously, Tommy Bug, which was got some really good reception on, and Fahid Ben Kolfala, one of my good friends, one of the best to grace the A-League. Please get around that episode if you haven't. Give us a like, subscribe, and comment. All those that have, I say it every episode, you are the life and soul of this podcast, so thank you so much. Um, I'm excited for today's episode. Now, I met one of these boys a few weeks ago, thanks to my good mate Tommy Sheridan, who will feature on this, of course, uh, in Josh Dunkley, and it was a pleasure to meet you, mate, but we couldn't have you on today without bringing your bromance, your partner, and Adam Trelaw as well. Tim is not here. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there a third? Is there? <laughs> no, but no, it's honestly pleasure, boys, for, for coming on. And then obviously the sideline comments, the expert, mate, the, the one who's got the, the comedy jokes, the one-line king, as I call you, Tommy Sheridan. Thank you for coming in as well. Thanks, mate. Elite company today, elite company. It is. I'm a, I'm a little bit uh, excited for this one. And, and we were going to talk footy, but we have to go straight into American sport because Absolutely. some news has dropped today. As we're filming this, people, Tom Brady is coming back. Well, it's not long ago we were just talking about him retiring, wasn't it? <laughs> I know. Yeah. We, we actually gave away a jersey we were just saying about that. Someone sold his ball, so it's yep. big news. But, but was it really – were you really surprised? It was like the way that he was playing mm. – I know you love your NFL, Tommy. Um, the way that he was playing – it was like when he retired, it was kind of like, why are you retiring? Like, yeah. you're it, still dominating, mate. It was the family thing, and that's like, oh, but it was, not, it was a bit flat. Like, it was a bit like, mate, you haven't really yeah. like, told <laughs> yeah, everyone. So, <laughs> it's like, you're done or not? And yeah. Then, yeah, done. Yeah. Everyone, but, mate, huge. Unreal. Huge. Got Unreal. got tags, so he's there. Evans. They're like, just running it back. Yeah. And you just showed, you just showed a little stat there before. Yeah, yeah it was a what, his last. What was it? Last 10 years, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Last nine years, yeah. Win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. So, so the ratio He's due for a win. He's going to win. Oh, yeah. How good. Uh-oh. Jump on. So it's, what Tampa, are they paying? Tampa going to be up there again? Obviously with the Brady oh. effect, but I mean the squad they have. Have they kept yeah, the, the they well, well, they've kept the same squad. Yeah. Well, no one knows what Gronkowski's doing. Is he? He's not back. He'll stay he? with Tom. Yeah, he'll stay, <laughs> he'll stay now. Well, he actually, he's actually officially too, hasn't done it. Yeah, they ain't going anywhere. It's the Gronk and Brady effect. Yeah, but who's who? Who's Gronk? Who's Brady? Oh, oh. Big, call, big call. Let's not <laughs> have a rift here on the start <laughs> of the show. Who's the Brady? Oh no, Tommy. Who do you think, mate? Oh, he's cooking breakfast, Ray B. That's got to be up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's so for me. Also, the other the other twist, Russell Wilson. Yeah. That's it. Did Did anyone see that coming? Did you see him leaving the Seahawks? Yep. Yeah. It's a few dramas this year with yep. him, mm. boys. Thank God as well. Pete Carroll, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle, nah, Seattle in general. Yeah, they just run the ball. Shit game plan. Shocking. He's gonna. He's got. Oh, I can't wait to watch Jerry Judy now. Me too. Yeah. So, Seattle. Seattle literally just got rid of their. Arguably their greatest defensive player of all time, yeah. Bobby Wagner. Yeah, they, right. they literally just let him walk. Isn't he like one of the best tackles going around? Or is that a salary cap thing? I think it is. It's similar to the Mari Cooper thing with. Oh. They, they they just got Need Dallas room. just literally just see you, mate. Well, see you later. Go to the Browns, man. And then gave Michael Gallup a sixty-two million dollar contract extension. Did you see that today? I didn't see that. Are you serious? Got rid of a Mari Cooper and gave Michael Gallup a sixty-two Off million dollar. I know. Hell. It's pretty rogue at the moment. Mate, it? it's all happening. I mean, you're big on your NBA. We were just talking about it before. KD's dropping 53. The, the East, East, East is stacked. East. You, my East, man. Who do you go for in the East? Are you? Well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm a, so KD's, that's my it's team, boy. KD. Ah, oh, it's okay. You, follow, you like me, you follow players. Well, yeah. KD. I follow KD mainly. But yeah. So the way it started for me is I wanted to get into something outside of footy. Yeah. And I got drafted to the Giants. And I, had, I just loved playing NBA 2K and NBA Live. Oh. But I never really watched it. <laughs> Basketball. Anyway, moved up to Sydney. Foxtel didn't have Dandy Boy, mate. We didn't have Foxtel yeah. and Dan Hall. Oh, we <laughs> love the Dandy Boy. Shout out. So I had no Foxtel. Um, pretty much started watching basketball, and I just wanted to follow a team. And they were Seattle at the time, and it was KD's second year. So reason why I followed them is Giants were startup team. Seattle just relocated the Oklahoma startup team. I'll just follow Kevin Durant. So mad, mad, mad Kevin Durant fan for. All the way up until his last season there. Wow. Watched every game religiously. As soon as he got, as soon as I found out he got traded. So I remember waking up. I knew he was gonna go because there was talk about it. From this is from the Warriors? Oklahoma. Oh, from, nah, from oh, Oklahoma. Okay, this is what I want to ask you. How did you feel? And, about well, that I moment? was mad, mate. I was i I'd watch every single Oklahoma game. Yeah. Like league pass. It was they were my team. Yeah. I was heartbroken when that we, we were up three well. one against Golden State. When they came back and won and hell, yeah, freaking hurts. Steph Curry did that dumbass shimmy that he does. <laughs> like, oh. At the time, I just hated it. Anyway, when we're waking up, I'm like, okay, I'll be okay if he goes to 
28 other teams. Obviously, Oklahoma being the 29th. The one team I didn't want him to go to was the Warriors because I didn't like the Warriors. Woke up. And initially, I thought it was the Wizards because he's from Washington. Yes. And it said Warriors. And I was just like, you know what? I'm never supporting a team again. I'm just going to go for Kevin Durant. Yeah. So. Geez, that, I still, it still doesn't sit well with me, that trade. It doesn't really it with just, me. It either. changed the NBA. Like, I mean, I know LeBron did it a few years before, but like, they, they were, you knew they were going to win. Oh, I it's like every team now is trying to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's Might not well working. Stack though. Stack it. Exactly, <laughs> it's not working anymore. Oh, there was what are they, they call them? The big threes. There was one big three. What fifteen years ago? Now there's yeah. every second team's a big three. I know. Yeah. So they yeah. don't work all the time. Though, no, do they? they don't. Well, the teams no. that are they're leading the the West and East, they're not necessarily the stacked teams. They're no. the ones that have drafted like the and out in pieces. Suns, yeah. Suns and Heat play good team. Love it. Love, yeah. it. love it. I love it. That's why I love Bobby them. Book is a star, but and Butler's a competitive star, but they're not like there's no you know there's no absolute superstar. Nah, well, no. Nah. Booker is, but they're just a good team. Yeah. So Who I do you think's going to win? I reckon the Suns, man. Do you reckon? I, I reckon the Suns. I, I reckon that too. Them or Miami, because this is my belief about basketball and how you win, is you can get there and, and scrape your eye in, whatever it is, but you need star power. You need someone who can take over a game. Mm. And you see the differences between the teams that haven't won versus have won is when the game's on the line, a lot of the time it just comes down to your star player versus the other team's star yeah. player. Yeah. Phoenix, you talk about Phoenix. They've got Devin Booker. He's their star player. So when the game's on the line, you trust him to get the job done. Same as Miami when you go to Miami, Jimmy Butler. A few years ago, no one thought he was the star player until yeah. that – series when it, we were all in the hub and they played that series and he was dominating every every game so that's why I think those players like that would win where there's teams where in my own opinion and this is a little bit controversial Dallas Mavericks I don't think Luka Doncic is that star player where he Massive can take over call. a game and win Huge. in a playoff situation oh no. we love this not yet. Breaking. not yet not yet. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. That is Where, huge. No I, comment is. I, 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 I love it. Let's I, I would have said the same as Jimmy Butler. He proves in the pudding for him. He showed that when they lost to LA, I know they lost, but it wasn't his fault. He was dominant. He was the man, he was the reason why they were in that series. Where I don't believe someone like Dallas or even Utah, for instance. I don't think Donovan Mitchell. They mm. can get there because they got a great roster, but I don't think Utah uh, Donovan Mitchell has that star power to drag his team over the line versus someone like Devin Booker for Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's huge. Dunks, what about you? Are you into your NBA? Yeah, I follow it. Not as hard as these two boys. Yeah, but you're more NFL, aren't you? Probably. Yeah, probably. I yeah. would say more NFL, but I, I still don't have a team. Like I'll just like Tommy asked me, "Oh, who's your team?" I find it hard to pick a team in the yeah. NBA because of the American, well, American sports. Yeah, yeah. In general, in like general. unless I go to a ground and get an affiliation Sporting. with the exactly. city, then like you have to jump ship. Yeah, just to keep it entertaining. Like you just keep an interest. Like fantasy for me is like that's who I go for. Yeah, I just go yeah. for fantasy <laughs> and watch watch my players play, and then that's it. But that also puts you off players as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does. Sure there's oh, James Harden. Yeah, James Harden. Harden. Yeah. It's Cooper, it's Cooper Cup for me. Oh, Wait, was, yeah. that a, was that a hoax that I read something about him bringing a bunch of birds to training? Nah, that, 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 was, a, was that well, fake news? 10 game suspension. He played two games later. Yeah, yeah. so it must have been fake. But let's tell you what, I thought that's impressive. <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> He's just changed it up, hasn't he, in Philadelphia? Well, before, before we go into some footy and stuff, I, I do want to get into the bromance because it's been well headlined and you guys must be sick of talking about it. But at the same time, like, how did you guys create a connection? Did you know each other before you came to the doggies? Like, as well as you did? No, nah, no. Nah, I didn't know. No, nah, I really know each other. No, nah, not at all. Just played against each no other. Just way. mutual respect. And yeah. I actually, before you go into that, I did hear that uh, Dunks is renowned for when you go and shake his hand before a game. Oh, he, he wouldn't he's shake your hand. a handshake yeah. into the ribs. Absolutely. But he gave you a handshake. He did. Wow. No, I actually did, yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Like, looking back now, it's like, why did I do well, that? Why did you do that? But oh, obviously, yeah. we had a connection yeah. that we didn't know about. Yeah, it was something. I shake hands. That's one thing I always do. Like, I, you always hear people talk about, why do you shake hands with someone for a game? I just do. That's just what I like doing. And yeah. I didn't know what I was going to get from him. Because my perception of Josh, so this is how close we are, I call him Josh. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was just yeah, going like, to say, you haven't, you haven't yeah. called me Josh for ages. <laughs> my perception of Dunks is early days before I even knew him, sorry, before I knew him, was like, he's this tough, like, pretty intimidating kind of player because of the way that he plays. So I didn't know if he was going to shake my hand. Yeah. And, yeah, I stuck the hand out. Not because I didn't like beeline for him. At the centre bounce, we lined up on each other and then obviously went to shake his hand and he stuck his hand out and shook my hand. See, what's what's your perspective on that? Because you're actually a very nice guy. So when you're on the field, what what's like in going through your head? Oh, I try and psych myself up to be like, <laughs> So it's all, it's all just yeah. a mental battle. So this you. was very off-putting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so oh, I started the game, the game like shit. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Is that why we won the game? <laughs> yeah, you won the game. Oh, my God. See, I feel like if I was walking over to the wing and saw you, I wouldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I'd be like, fuck me, how am I going to run next to this? I'd fuck him on the ass. 
<laughs> Mate, you get back and I'll get on your yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep, just give me some I space well, early. I, I think I... It depends on who it is, but yeah, that's interesting that you don't shake hands. Yeah, I don't. I that don't. actually would get me going a bit. I, I'd yeah. be like, oh, this arrogant. Bastard. Yeah, what a prick. You know? But it's not a, it's not like a thing you have to do. It's I've seen some full forwards with full backs. They do it. Some don't. Yeah. So it's like it's you know it's very. Well, I don't think it's not that you don't. If someone, I'll, you if someone sticks their yeah, hand out, they stick their hand out. You shake the hand, won't you? Yeah, yeah, probably. Most of the time. Yeah, oh, depends who it, it, depends who it is. Send that really depends who it is. Have <laughs> you thought about doing the old E? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I had a kid yesterday, like, give me the knuckles and then just pulled away. I was like, geez, you little smart ass. Yeah. you got to do that this year, I reckon. Put the, put the hand out. Maybe round one. <laughs> All cameras are on. Nah, don't don't or stick to your guns, mate. Nah. Stick yeah. to the rib punch. No, nah, that's what like. Round one, I won't be doing it. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, that's well, yeah. So, so when you came to the club, obviously you, that's the back of story. But then it just connected. Like, what 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 sort of happened there? Yeah, well, Adzi messaged me literally straight after the trade. All right. Period. Okay. So every, after everything went down, he messaged me and pretty much said like, "Let's catch up. Let's talk about it." You know, talk about his situation, talk about mine. We understood each other. We caught up. The cross was there as well. Hayden Crozier the next day at the footy club and we had breakfast or lunch. I can't remember what it was, but um, we sat there for probably two hours. No joke, just talking everything through. And after that, it was like straight away we had the connection. Like yeah, he came yeah. to my house the next day and yeah. we were shooting hoops out the back. Wow, like, that's cool as fuck. It just happened really quickly. More Wait. for me, I think I think I had – because I had a lot of insecurities. Like I clearly had a lot of insecurities at that time. I've been open about struggling with – mentally struggling with things yeah. that I've had before and then going through what I kind of went through with that not wanting to leave I was that insecure mate I didn't know like I just needed to find kind of my security blanket in a way but not forcing it yeah and it yeah. wasn't like I was like oh, okay who do I find do I find Josh here or someone I'm just going to latch myself onto him <laughs> yeah. I wanted it to be authentic I wanted it to be yeah. something that I felt and, and it's not like I'm really close with Several guys there. You just yeah, mentioned yeah, Crosby yeah. before. Crosby and I, you know, we're the same age. We grew up in the same area. Played a lot of my um, rep junior footy against him, so I knew him pretty well anyway. Okay. And um, just after that discussion that we had, it was very authentic. It was very real. We spoke about his experiences, my experiences that we went through, and I think it was just easy to learn on each other after that. And that's where that has just grown from there. And it's been something that, yeah, you look back in hindsight, and it's like it's probably the best thing that kind of happened for me. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. What were the, you, Obviously, a lot of people have heard Adzi's side of that trade, but what was it like for the Bulldogs, like for the boys that were in there when you heard Troll was coming to you guys? Mm. What, was probably, yeah, what was it like? Has actually? anyone ever asked that? Were you like, never we asked like, that? Like, oh, now I've got another person yeah. to compete with. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Which is of. usually the mentality of an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how you make it. It's like draft day. It's like draft day, right? Like the club, I was at Freo, right? There's the, they need a key back or a key forward. <laughs> they, take a, they take a mid, everyone's like, ah! <laughs> and they take, so and they true. Chera, right? And Chera and Brayshaw, first two picks, they need a tall. Another mid. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Sheridan. Out the door two years later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love it. No, nah, we did. We, we were, It was actually really good for us because we needed an outside player like with Adam Speed. We, it was something that we needed. It was something that we'd talked about as a, as a team, as a footy club, um, being a part of the leadership group and stuff like that, talking to players. And that was something that we really wanted. So when it did happen, it was positive. It was, everyone was really excited about it. And obviously the caliber of player that Adzi was, or and is now, yeah, um, <laughs> was. <laughs> Fast, that's early. Yeah, sorry. They're throwing some jokes. I shouldn't, have said, I shouldn't who's, have said that. Who's Brady? Who what? <laughs> Are you better now or then? As a player? Yeah. Well and truly think I'm a much better player now. Going off that grand final. Because of the experiences and the way I've been able to kind of change my body a bit. I've lost a bit of weight and feel like I'm back. Career best. Using my speed. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like ready for a big year. Bloody oath. Well, can can you give us an insight? Because you mentioned, like, we we talk about the quality of players you guys have, but a stacked midfield. Like, you'd naturally think, fuck, it's going to be pretty competitive in there. Everyone wants to play. How's the camaraderie with that to obviously still get the best out of everyone, but obviously you still want you to yourself to be playing, obviously. Yeah, I mean, we talk about it a fair bit. We've talked about it over the preseason because last year we both got injured, Adam and I. So we had a lot of footy that we missed right. and we didn't have the midfield numbers that going through there that we had at the start of the season. Mm-hmm. So we're sort of trying to – get back to where we were at the start of last year. I think the first six rounds or seven rounds we were all playing and it was an even contribution every week. So you can rely on each other to play your role. Like I know Adam's outside speed is awesome. So I'm like my role is probably more inside. His is more outside. Yeah. So I'm getting the ball and giving it to him and then celebrating goals when he kicks them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most, most of my goals I kicked last year was – Yeah. <laughs> I mean we, we complement each other. Like that's, a, that's probably the best thing about it and you can rely on – 
your teammate next year that's there to always compete. It, How is a, it is a massive hole when you lose one weapon <clears throat> and then you lose two. It does change the whole dynamic, Absolutely. doesn't it? Because you've got to drag someone from a position where yep. they're doing really well yep. and then they've got to fill that one. And then you might get it, the effort, but you don't get that yep. when the game's in the line. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. this is not going to pop up and do yeah. what we want. Well, it's kind of kind of what I said back to that star power thing. It's kind of that as well in, in a way where if you lose someone, you then rely way too much on someone else. It's almost yeah. the polar opposite in the AFL where you need us to be able to rely on each other. Yes, you know, there's going to be a game where maybe Bont takes over and just dominates the last quarter and we win. But majority of the game should be spread evenly and, and that's exactly how we were doing it early days. I, I don't think we lost until – what round did we lose It was round year? seven. Round seven. Right up till then it was probably – in my career, probably the best team footy that I'd been a part of for the first six, seven games really? prior to he got injured, then I got injured, then we had a few breakups here and there, and it was just really tough to really get that back towards yeah. the end of the year because we were kind of forcing it and mm. it wasn't being – you know, that camaraderie that we'd built up and the cohesion that we'd built up, we kind of lost a bit of it because, you know, they travelled away, COVID hit, we weren't training together, so it was really hard to get that back. I mean, yeah. I felt like we got it back come finals time. Mm. It we just took a, us time. We had a really low period – the last three games, we got smacked to three. We got yeah. smacked three times. We lost to yes, the team Hawthorne, outside of the eight. Late, yeah. We were just horrendous. And then we had a really good meeting, the midfield meeting prior to that final series. And we just spoke about like what made it easier for us earlier in the year. And that's where we want to get back to. And I felt like we did. I really did. Other than the midfield for Melbourne absolutely dominating in that second Well, half. I honestly, the game you guys beat Port in Port, I actually thought, like, dogs are going to go here. Like, it was such... Yeah. Because oh. Port, Port were, like, blistering favourites yeah, as yeah. well through that period, along with Melbourne. Oh, people don't realise the granny was... Man, it could have went anywhere either way. Yeah. Well, yeah. Three, Obviously, three quarter time. They, they couldn't have played any better footy in the last no. quarter and the end of the third. Mm. But to that point... Yeah. A, well, you after guys, you guys yeah. were actually winning. Like, yeah. it was like, like yeah. I had no it was idea. Such a good game. It was such a good yeah, game yeah, to yeah. watch. Are you got one this year. I hope so. But even I, I remember someone. I don't remember who it was, but someone said you could have put you know Hawthorne after they three peated into that third and fourth quarter against Melbourne, and they wouldn't have stopped Melbourne. That's yeah. how good Melbourne were playing, and that's full credit to him. I mean, you show when you when you give a team an opportunity to do what they want to do, they just make you look stupid, and that's mm. exactly what they did to us in that yeah. second half. Just on that, how big's the uh, round one clash then? <laughs> it's big. I mean, <laughs> it is. I don't think it's a rivalry. Is it being pumped up more outside than it would be between yeah, your four walls? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thing? But yeah. there's like there's love hate relationships. Like <clears throat> blokes, you know what it's like. I mean, you yeah. played footy and. You, you respect guys from the opposition team, but then also there's guys that piss you off. So you just like, <laughs> I love Doug's attitude. Mate. And you want, He's but you want to get the, you do want to get the better of them. Like you know, mm. you come up against, we're coming up against probably. Well, they are the benchmark. They are, as of now because they've won the premiership, but their midfield probably is the benchmark. Yeah, because again, sure. they've won the premiership. Mm. You come up against that, and you're just like, well, I want to beat that. Like mm. we want to beat that, and that's yeah. the expectation we're going to go going into the game. Is is that kind of. Uh, I mean, not changed how you guys have come into pre-season, but added some more fuel for everyone because now you've got a, a bit of a target on Melbourne, but also for you guys, you, you were so close. Yeah, I, I think, again, going off experience, because you know, I was fortunate enough with Colin, we had like three really – well, every year I was there other than the first two really good years. Made granny following year we – Missed by a kick against the Giants. You were, you were there oh, at that game, 2-19. That was the, that was the hardest final. game to watch. For, either, for anyone, I yeah, it was. The it last 15 been. minutes, it was like, because the ball just we just kept getting the ball inside 50, inside 50, inside 50. But anyway, we obviously didn't win. But I was part of a really good sustained period where we had success, and I think that's probably the main motivating thing for now the situation that we're in now. I, you know, obviously I want to win every year. I want to win the flag every year. But I want it to be over a sustained period and yeah. have success for my whole footy career being here. I want to be in a position where where you know, putting ourselves in a position to win it every single year and not yeah. it being one year one year on, one year off, one year on, yeah. one year off. And I know 216, when you boys won, he could probably touch on this more, but the following year there was a massive drop-off and yeah. that's something that we just don't want to do. We want to, we want to be able to compete each, each year. And that's good because we've had a lot of that experience now. So guys that were at 16... 17 drop off, 18, you know, start to come back. But you learn through those yep. experiences. Yep. Yeah. And then last year, like the grand final, we had a lot, lot of young guys playing their first final series. So to get that experience will then help us moving forward as yeah. well. Because this is what you, you like now, your, your squad's actually quite young still. Yeah. Like yep. there's so much, like when you talk about sustained period of growth and success, you're in a ripe, ripe spot to be able to do that. Yeah. Well, our core, our core players, like you, like Naughty 
and and Chile and Bonsi. Like these guys aren't that old. Like they no, they feel it seems like they are, no. but then yeah, I know. Well, Nordy's only twenty one, and yeah. he's <laughs> like he's, mate, he's a superstar. He's a monster too. He's like, crazy. He's built, like, he actually has put on. Oh yeah, yeah, room, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we ran into each other in Perth. I haven't seen him for it since. But oh, it's a big mate, I, I, after the season when he was going back, I was like, mate, you've put on some size. And that was in like November. Yeah, he would have gone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this year, so it's funny because we always we always bag him out about. It. He never you does preseason. Him, don't you? I call him I call him Cotton because every <laughs> every preseason he's wrapped in cotton wool. Like oh, he does yeah. nothing. This Literally. is his first preseason. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Okay, so wow. first full preseason. Yeah. So I'm yeah. really excited to see how he goes. He's been looking good too, hasn't he? he? Looks, yeah. yeah, he looks awesome. He always does. I think, we yeah. just got to get our connection better to him, and yeah. we'll be right. Just put it in the air. Yeah, <laughs> that's Nordy all we've been doing. It just hasn't been working. Now, obviously, the the doggies, Melbourne, those midfield battles are well heralded but I'm interested because you guys have got such a good midfield um, like internally is there anyone any other teams where you from a midfield to midfield battle you guys are really like you know you've got to be up for a big day today is there yeah. anyone that stands out outside of yeah, the I, Demons I think there's a couple come to mind for me first one I thought of was the Giants I think they've got and I personally think, because I'm a huge, huge, we were talking about this before, a huge fan of Steve Coniglio <clears throat> and one of the greatest human beings you'll ever meet and he when he was at his best, which I think he'll be at his best again this year, mm. he was a top 10 player in the league. He was a star. He'd go forward, kick goals, damage yeah. it with the ball. And then you think about Josh Kelly and Callum Ward, who again, underappreciated Callum Ward. People have forgotten about how good he is. Uh, Tim Taranto, Jacob Hopper, <laughs> these guys, these guys are stars. Mental. And you let them have it on their own terms, they'll cut you up. So that's yeah. the team I think of. And, and I think Carlton as well. I think with Walsh now being who he is, he's a superstar. Yeah. Cripper looks like he's going to be back to his best. They've added Chera and George, George Stewart, who's another underrated yeah. player. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's Richmond, like Dusty, like there's guy, there's heaps, there's heaps of midfield groups out there that are good. But I think those two teams that I mentioned are the ones that kind of intimidate you the most, where you got to know yeah. you got to be on. Dunks for you. Any is there anyone one on one that you kind of you find sort of the toughest in, in your spot, if giving you so inside and in, in the gritty of it all. Yeah, I spoke. We spoke about this before. Like Josh Kennedy from Sydney. Yeah, he's a big sort of. That be a good matchup. Big body midfielder. Match-up. I looked up to him as a kid. Like he was my pretty much my idol. So to match up against him was pretty surreal early days. But I find him one of the hardest to move. And yeah. Ben Cunnington's another one that's that's really strong. I'd like when you body up someone in the midfield, it's sort yeah. of like you try and hit them late or you try and find something, but they don't move. They, push them <laughs> they literally, yeah. they literally don't move. Like Cunnington will just sit himself in in their hit two zone, and you cannot move him. Yeah, <laughs> oh, shit. yeah. So you just got to wait for him to get the ball and try and strip him. Yeah, yeah, yeah bloody nice. Yeah, well, Tommy. For for you, obviously, you were close to the Giants' midfield. You've been a midfielder yourself. What's what sort of your expectations on them? Well, on I, I like what you said because I, I obviously I rate them probably more than most and being there. But Tom Green's one that people yeah, forget as well. Not forget, but I reckon Leon hasn't played him in his position. Like, and that's not a dig at Leon. There's so many midfielders at the Giants. If we can get him in there more, I reckon, and play Cogs in that fifty-fifty or whatever, whoever's hot. Um, and like Josh Kelly can play in and out. So you get the wings. There's a lot of midfielders that can go through. I'm really looking forward to him. I think the, I think this Car- I think Carlton's my biggest improver. I've said this already. I think they're going to make the eight, and people will laugh at me. I, I love it. <laughs> I think Crip is back, and I think Voss is going to add a bit of like, yep. like it's time. <clears throat> it's time for our club to you know. Yeah. I want to be known for effort and hard work, and there's a lot of talent around. Yeah. So hopefully, while she's fit, um, so those two midfields, yours and obviously the D's, is going to be really hot, and then. Um, yeah, even like Port. Port had a really bad prelim, but if you, if you take that game away, you know, she like... Their season was unreal. I mean, yeah. they beat you guys. <laughs> people might say that, you know, they're, they're a chance to win it, you know? So I'm really looking forward to it. It's probably first time since... It, like last year, I was a bit just, you know, watching, but now I'm actually really getting Keen. back into the footy. I've been out for a year now. I'm, I'm actually starting... When, when you said back. we at the start, so are you, are, you, are you connected to the Giants or are you connected to <laughs> Freo? Same with the NBA. <laughs> I just go for my mates. Okay. Yeah. I don't have, like... I obviously love the Giants, love Freo because I was there and all my mates, I've got a few mates that are still at Freo, but yep. the Giants is very close to my heart. Yep. And then watching mates, I literally love watching everyone yep. play well. So even last year when we, it was like Maisie and him and Cross the couch, like I'm, I'm sitting on the fence. Like, like, <laughs> we used to all play well and you know, just whoever wins, wins. Like, yeah. like broke your hands. Yep. But, uh, so yep. it's pretty hard when you come out, to yeah. Honest, yeah. especially when you've played at different clubs and you're a bit social as well. Yep. You just want everyone to go well. But I think the Giants, for me, because they haven't won one, you know? Who would yeah. you go for? What do you mean? When like you finish I retired right now? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I I just would always think that the freshest <coughs> in your mind, and that would be the Bulldogs for me. Yeah. But like, as you said, Tommy, I have a great connection with the Giants because that's where I – kind of grew up and matured and well I haven't really matured but that's where <laughs> I, 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 
yeah, that's, that's where, where I matured. And then obviously Collingwood, like I didn't want to leave there. So and there's so many great people there that I love. Yeah. I still have a really good connection there. But I don't know. I actually don't know. I'll answer that question. Hopefully I've won a few flags. Then then that would then be you got some more attachment. Can we can we just touch on that? Like how was that sort of period for you? Because I, I know it was quite documented, it was quite tough, but just given now, your like hindsight's a beautiful thing yeah. as well. Like, what's sort of your view back on it all? Well, yeah, hindsight is a beautiful thing. I always say that. I yeah. always say that to George all the time <laughs> about um, about that. But yeah, it's it's. I don't know. It's it's personally, I think it's the best thing that's happened to me. Yeah. Um, at the time, I didn't. Obviously, mm. I, I felt like my world was falling apart. And I didn't know what was going on because I wanted to stay at the Pies. I'd re-sign there that year, and I had five years left on my contract. So that was probably the the toughest thing that I went through. But I think. Once the game started last year and, and then I fully started to understand, like it took me a while to just get my head around playing. Like just – you would know, Tommy, when you go from one club to another, you got to learn new things. you got to learn how to play. you got to learn how the Bulldogs play. You've got to find yeah. your feet again. you got to establish yourself. Like I walked into the footy club as the second most experienced game player at the Bulldogs behind Steph Martin, who was another new guy. But I still felt like junior, I was a almost. rookie. Like I just had no idea, and I think that's where a lot of my insecurities came. And and as the year went went on, went on and on, I felt a lot more connected. And then there was another challenge where I got injured. You don't feel connected. Yeah. Got back, and I think if it wasn't for that final series, that was where it really instilled in me how grateful I am to be in the position <clears> that I'm in. And now looking back, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me because I'm I'm in a, all I want to do, mate, is win. That's all I want to do. I just want to yeah. win, just win, and. Not saying that that's not what Collingwood's going to do because I think they're going to be good this year. As you said about Carlton, I think Collingwood will be a lot better than what people think. Maybe there's a lot of my heart wanting that for him, but I'm in a position now with the footy club that I feel like here, the rest of my footy career, hopefully, we're going to be in a position to win. So yeah. It's not really spoken about like outside. Like it is from an athlete perspective and when you're in the game, it is a daunting thing going to a new club. Oh, yeah. Especially oh, even oh, even yeah. if you're established, starting from ground zero yeah. is not fun for anyone. I couldn't get off the ground, so I did my calf down. When you went to... When I went there, I had a full pre-season, then calf, oh, calf, calf, calf. Frustrating. And I got a game and did my calf in the yep. first quarter and... You know, it is hard. Then I come back the next preseason and do another calf, and I, could, I just couldn't get going. So yep. When I played two games, it was almost embarrassing for my standards. Yep. So I know exactly what you mean. You are insecure because you're going. These guys know I can play well, mm. but I'm not. Well, I'm not I, doing for it. me, I wasn't doing it. What I was good as a team defence. Yep. A completely different game plan. Yeah. You're trying to learn. And you're learning it. Yep. Yeah. Like a, you know, like a Ross Lyon coach versus a Leon. They're completely yep. opposite. Yeah. But you're trying to change your brain. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can make mistakes, mate. Yep. You know, where at the other club you you're getting sprayed. Yep. So you've got to. I was probably a bit like harsh on myself, I yep. reckon, at training. Walking into a new club as well, like the young players, it takes like a month to learn people's names. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it's such, yeah, it's different to soccer. <laughs> but you don't want to make a mistake. How many blokes would there be? Like 40 odd blokes? Yeah, 45. 45 yeah. Jesus like, Christ. And did you, do you worry at all? Like, did you worry at all about what their perception of you was yeah, early days? Yeah, like, well, because I already had, like, I was mates with a few of the boys. Okay. But you're trying to do everything right. <laughs> yeah. And you're also, yeah. like, yeah, you just overthink things. Yeah. You should just roll yeah. in. Yeah. Which I was. When I was. But when I was injured, I started overthinking things. Yeah. You know? That's interesting. Um, but a new club, like, to come in and make, I think when you play at a high level, that's probably where you, I reckon, start to go, I belong here. Yeah. Yeah. This and that's my, what it was. My for place. Me. Yep. So I never did that. So that was probably the hardest part. But oh, you, as you said, Doggies are in a great position for yeah. you, so yep. hindsight is Dunk, you've been on the other side of this because <clears throat> you obviously had – you obviously were always at the Bulldogs, but then I'm interested to get your perspective when it comes to the contract talks because your name kind of got dragged through the mud. It's like, oh, he's money hungry, he's wanting to move, but no one really ever got your opinion and your view. Like, mm. how do you manage that external noise by still getting what you want? Because you're entitled to get what's best for you in, in your career at the point you were. But how did you balance that? Because that would have been tough, I reckon. It was tough, mate. It was very tough. I mean, that's where I'm probably so grateful for Adzi. Like yeah. the way that he came in and that first chat that we had was pretty special to me and he understood everything that I was going through and I wouldn't be able to do it without my family as well. So so were you going through that at the same time Adzi sort of came across or was that was it a year in? When when was this? I'm just trying to get the nah, this is right. this is after the trade. So after yeah. the trade okay, didn't so go down. It. Yeah. Right. So he we both had the same thing go on. Or not the same thing, but similar things Pretty go much. on at the same time. Yeah. So to understand each other and then have his full support for right. me. Because I felt like, you know, obviously everything went down the way that it did and you feel like you lose trust in teammates <clears throat> and Correct. all teammates have lost trust in me, staff have lost trust in me because, you know, you want to leave the footy club. But yeah. to be able to 
have someone like Adam there that's understanding of everything um, and then be able to sort of pick, your, pick yourself up and start training again. And obviously, I wanted to put my best foot forward because you feel like you do have a chink in the armor, I yeah. guess, after everything goes down. So it is hard, but it's at the same time, you've got to have your close support network that's always there to support you. Yeah, bloody oath. It's such, man, it's such a unique business sport. Like, hey, you can't really relate that to anything else. Well, players are loyal and clubs are ruthless. And that's the nature. Yeah, yeah. it's a business and at the AFL, end of the day. I reckon should be more loyal, you know, like what happens in your scenario, like it's pretty rare in AFL. Yeah. In NBA, NFL, I reckon you can get your head around it because the money, like they're getting paid. Yeah. <clears throat> like it's not that, uh, but you're getting paid bulk. So it's like put up with it. But when it's a little bit less. Yep. But I mean, everyone, everyone too goes through negotiations. Like everyone signs contracts, not only in sport, but in the world. Like yeah. you're always talking about it. So to, to be, I suppose, frowned upon for not signing a contract or doing something that's best for you, it's, I think, it's, it's I think unbelievable. It's, I think it's unfair. It's, yeah, correct. I so I don't think that. Yeah, I, th- I just think that everyone should do. At the end of the day, you do want team success. Like that's the main driving factor in in sport, and especially team sport. So that's the that's the only thing that you can sort of look forward to. Whereas, I think if guys aren't getting team success, then yeah, sure. Yeah, you got to do what's best for you. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Agreed, mate. That would have been a crazy period. I remember that clear as day. What's What's it like working with Bevo? Because he's got a, obviously an external persona, but internally I reckon he'd be more ruthless than potentially what he is. But it seems like he's managing to work with so many quality players and, and keep everyone happy, which you know is almost impossible to do in that environment. But what's he like for you, you guys? Yeah, well, I think my experience is I think that's the key. you got to be able to um, have a relationship with each individual and accept them for who they are. I mean, we have some... <laughs> Unique individuals. Everyone's everyone, <laughs> everyone's different. Which we love. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and I think that's a massive strength of his. And I think to be able to differ- differentiate um, a footy relationship and a like a re- like a friendship relationship is a key factor in having you know a, a good relationship with the coach. And it doesn't even have to be the main coach; it could be the assistant coach, whoever it is. And I feel like he does that really well from my experiences. Um, in terms of the footy, I think yeah, I, I still think he's still trying to just grow with the game as most coaches are and he's always trying to find ways to make us better and, and get better and sometimes sometimes he goes a little bit you know boys are like oh what the heck's going on here what are, what are <laughs> on we doing here? <laughs> sometimes he does <laughs> yeah. and um sometimes yeah. he does some funny things himself out there like the other day remember when we were finished training and he was carrying those two handball things <laughs> so you know the you would know him, Tommy. You know when you do, um, say it's like a handball game, and they're like those handball goals where you put it in the ground. It's like a big square, and it's like a net, and you it's just handball into the. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, like he was just randomly walked up, <laughs> grabbed him, and you could see he'd committed to grabbing them both. And these things are heavy by themselves. <laughs> He's grabbed both of them and just put them on his shoulders, <laughs> and you could see that he was uncomfortable and it was hurting him, and he should have dropped them. But he's that proud. <laughs> he He's like, want to. Nah, I'm going to carry this thing off. <laughs> So he's like walking with one hanging off his left arm, one hanging off his right oh arm. Oh my walking god! Inside and, you but, said to me, "Look at Bevo." So he was over the far side. I ran over and I was like, "Mate, have a look at Bevo. <laughs> look what he's doing." But, nah, he's um. He's my experience unit. is he's hey. He's a big unit. Oh, he is. is he oh, smack, he loves training. Is yeah, he smack gym. He's in there every morning. Every, every morning, all of us. Say, like, oh, yeah. He's so rolled, he'll train. He rose, and then, he yeah, rose more than we're anyone. walking in. He's in the shower. He's just like yeah. finishing up. <laughs> oh, that's but now I I think he's. Yeah, I think that his ability to differentiate a, a coach relationship and a friendship relationship is something that I, like, yeah. I appreciate, definitely. What what sort of for you when you were playing, because you obviously had, you said, two spectrums of, of coaches there, but like what 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 got the best out of Tommy Sheridan? Was it the, the arm around the shoulder? Was it the Ross Lyon rant? Or what? Oh, well, I used to respond to the rant, but I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, does anyone? <laughs> I think the best coach is, as you said, like, I look back to my junior career, to be honest, mate. Like a lot of my, my mates' parents – you know, brought me up. Um, obviously, my dad's one of my biggest, you know, mentors, but he never coached me. He'd just sit back and relax and we talk about it after a game. But one of my, one of like all my um, closest mates' dads, they brought me up with local footy mm. and they'd be real hard on me at the right time. Because mm. you got that, you know, you got that respect and relationship, like you said. You'd respond like, yo, oh, geez, I, I need to do something here. Yeah. Um, yeah, this thing you need to understand the person. And then be really critical at the right time. Like yep. You're yeah. not doing something and be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer in that, changing to the person or the personality because uh, I've played under coaches where it's just one one thing fits all. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's very hard to do. with a In a team group. environment. It's like, very hard to, to yeah. get success that way. With, with certain, like, team principles, yes, but when it's an individual thing. You can't single someone out. No. Yeah, oh, well, gone on the days of that. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> 
<laughs> or you, sorry, you copped it. Oh, we all did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those days are probably done. Yeah. yeah. They're probably still there, but the players don't like them. Yeah. Yep. Old but, school footy, Jesus. Wouldn't have laughed. Oh, imagine back in the day. Like, <laughs> I know. 90s it's era. Unique, isn't oh, it? mate. And now, I, sorry, I just wanted to bring something up because uh, – I actually, we actually ran, I, we've ran a similar path on something and, and you're a big part of inspiration for doing this. And you remember obviously that four episode doco with Collingwood and it was quite heralded, obviously the stuff you were going through and, and the work you did with Jackie Louder. So I was going through something similar with soccer at the time, but more about like transition and acceptance of like, fuck, I'm not playing yep. at the highest level anymore and what I do. So I got on the phone and went and saw Jackie. She's, a, she's a, yeah, the got, greatest. Had, she? had her on this show. So, she's the greatest, mate. Mate, she's unbelievable. And we spoke quite candidly about everything. But yep. I just wanted to go back to that period for you because I don't think you realised it at the time, but I reckon you kind of paved a way for yep. what is a very masculine sport where people yeah. don't really speak about that stuff. Yep. And we're really vulnerable. And now I think it's a little bit more comfortable for people to do that. Yep. What was that like for you yeah. at that time? Well, firstly, Jackie, love her. I know she'll be listening. And Shout out, Jackie. I've literally been on the phone to her every day for the last week and a half <laughs> just recently, just <laughs> talking about life and a few things. But she's one of the greats. Um, no, I think at the time I didn't really – it wasn't something that I was – like I just openly spoke about it because um, the, the producer who was talking to me about it was just – how you going pretty much yeah and like i didn't think anything either. i was just like oh how am i going oh, oh I'm, I'm actually struggling a little bit like i've gone through this i've gone through that and then he just kept asking questions and that's kind of how it happened and then i think the feedback because i was doing afl 360 and i was doing a few things where i was just in the media and i was commonly getting then asked about questions about my mental health and and you know how you going with it and you said this and you said that things that i would never previously spoken about like yeah. i remember saying after a game it was 2018, uh, we played Carlton on the Friday night and we won. We won by, I think, six goals. And, like, I just didn't – like, I had that much anxiety going into the game and I can't even tell you what it was. It's just – you just go through it. Yeah. And I finished the game. We won. Everyone's back at the spa because we'd walk back over to the road and do our recovery. And I was in the spa just crying my eyes out. Like, and I just couldn't help myself. Like, I was just a mess. Yeah. And I remember talking about that and then it got deeper and deeper. And on AFL 360, they were asking me and – like, you know, how are you going through this? How are you going through that? So it was something that I never really thought was going to end up being anything. And then the more I got asked, the more I thought, oh, well, if people are going to actually, you know, relate to this and, and speak about this, it's something that I should talk about, be a big advocate for it, which I am. And yeah, yeah that time of my life and now it's, it's commonly I get asked about, commonly I get messages on my phone, private messages saying, oh, I'm... I'm a, you know, I could be, a, I could be a, a 20 year old, or could be a kid, 15 year old, saying, "Oh, I, I play representative footy. Um, I've done this. I'm really struggling with my anxiety. I can't get to, I can't find myself getting up out of bed, play a game because yeah. I'm just worried about this." So, um, yeah, it's something that I'm a massive, so, uh, a massive advocate for. I will, I'm, I'm always going to have, you know, mental health struggles. You know, I've you know, being on the border of being diagnosed with depression because of stuff that I've gone through and um, something that I'll always be advocate for because now we're in a time and an age where it's okay to talk about your feelings. It's okay to um, be open and honest about how you're feeling. We're, we're past that time where it should be big macho man. Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. I'm okay. I'm all good. You don't have to be like that anymore. Yeah. You should be able to talk about it. And clubs have support systems. And you, and you mentioned Jackie Lauder. She was an external source that I reached out to yeah. who has helped change my life, like change yeah. my absolute life. Because I was ready to retire in 2018 and I was 24 turning 25. Yeah. And for me to do that then and for her to be there for me and, and talk to me and, and understand that the first – um, thing you got to do to recognize this is actually well, actually recognize it and then talk to someone about it Yeah, and you just feel so much better so yeah something that I'll always have with me but I find ways to deal with it and believe me believe me and he knows more than anyone because commonly I talk to him about this I still have my times where I struggle big time like yeah. simple phone call to Josh be like mate I've, I've called him before sitting in my sauna I remember I was just crying I was like mate I'm just really struggling like yeah, yeah, yeah I can't yeah. explain yeah. to you I'm just really struggling like yeah I, I'm just, it's just hard. I need you, mate. Like I need you. He, he would just, you know, he just do his thing and make me feel okay. But it's just, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just things that, yeah, I was always open and honest with. It's what quite, sort of your um? Like it's interesting, and I appreciate the vulnerability ads, honestly. But and I'll jump into a few more things. Obviously, I did with Jackie. But yep. for you, what's what's interesting is obviously 
adds his, or you're not the only bloke that's getting phone calls from uh, from mates who are going through stuff like that. Like for you, how did you, I guess, be a voice or, or an ear through that period? Because it's it's quite hard to to balance, obviously making sure he's okay, but obviously trying to help him out as well. Yeah, it's a it's actually a hard one to sort of talk about because you know I think it's more about myself as a person and i i care about everyone that i know and i build good relationships with everyone and obviously ads and i are really close so you want to be there for him as much as you can and it's shit because we live so far away from each other I was, <laughs> otherwise we'd be at each other's house all the time <laughs> yeah. but it is i think it's really important to be there for your mates and like as you mentioned it is no okay not to be okay so you've yeah. got to be you've always got to support each other and whenever ads needs me i'm always there yeah. I'm the first one that, you know, I'll call him if I know, if I get wind of him being sort of upset or something like that. So to understand the person themselves and then actually be there for him is really important. And quite often it's, it's, it's most of the time it has nothing to do with footy. Yeah. <laughs> Rarely has it has anything to do with footy. Is footy like sometimes almost like a release? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Early days it wasn't because I used it as, as a get out. I used it as an excuse. Like, I don't want to play like this is, <clears throat> I don't want to do this because this is how I'm feeling. This is going to translate to my footy. But then as I discovered with Jackie and stuff, it, had nothing to do with footy to the point now where it's the sometimes it's the only good thing that i feel like i have and i'm just so grateful to be able to do it be able to do that yeah bloody oath what was jackie's greatest advice for you in those moments when you're really struggling what's something that you always go back to that you might be able to share with well her advice it wasn't really advice it was you gotta firstly you gotta be able to take in the good stuff and a lot of the times when you're struggling you just look at all the bad stuff and why you're struggling and what's affecting you so that was probably the first thing. But the second thing, it was more of a ways to get out of that bad headspace or negative headspace. And for me personally, it is being able to surround myself with, you know, we have these, she drew this bubble up for me, like this little bubble, like a circle. And it's, you know, a small circle on the inside and then a bigger circle outside of it, then an even bigger circle outside of it. And pretty much what it represented was the small circle is the people that I'm extremely close with who if, if my life was on the line, these are the people that I'm going to go to and they're going to make you feel whole. They're going to make you feel you're loved and you're, the, you're, you're a good human being and you deserve everything that you have. And I came up with, I don't know, probably four or five names and now another name's been added, obviously, with Josh, so that makes it about six people. Outside of that circle is kind of acquaintances in a way and then outside of that circle is just things that are irrelevant in your life and – that's kind of what we mapped out. And quite often I go back to that. Quite often I go back to that. And when I am struggling, Josh isn't in that circle of six, the six people, I'd probably call each person or message each person and say, look, <coughs> I'm, this is how I'm feeling. I need a bit of, like, I just need some reassurance. Just tell me that I'm okay. Tell me that everything's okay. Like, tell me I'm a good person. Just tell me that I'm doing things right. And that's kind of what we mapped out to do. And it took a while. Like, the first I'm going to say four months, I was still ignoring it. Like I, I was still struggling, but I just, I was more embarrassed than anything. I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to call someone and be like, oh, it's, mate, that's I, a, I feel that, like an that's idiot. A, that's a skill. This yeah. is what Jackie told it is, me. Yeah. Goes, that, that is a skill. It and is. I was like, I was thinking about it because when she was on, she was talking about, I was like, eh, because she's actually still part-time, I believe, right? Across like Collingwood, AFL, AFL, Melbourne w, Storm, Melbourne Storm as well. Like she's not full-time. Yeah. And I was telling her because there's obviously clubs and, and obviously I'm closer to the A-League than the AFL, but like no one, there's nothing for anyone. And mm. and obviously all sports quite similar. And I was like, if you were to sell your role like to a club, what, what would you say? And she just went through it and she was like, she kind of referenced like a Rolls Royce. She's like, think of like, for instance, we go Collingwood, you got Scott Pendlebury. He's the Rolls Royce of, of the players. He's like, if you want to get, you know, the best out of a Rolls Royce, you're not going to go and get a mechanic from, you know, Ford or something like that or, mm. or whatever mm. it is. She's like, you need the best in each field. We've, we've trained 10, 15 years for these conversations. We can pick up little details, little, little hints, little words and stuff like that to, to then lend advice. And she yep. was, yeah, she said that around, point. like speaking about your emotion, and especially as a bloke, like I, I'm, I'm equally as bad as anyone with that, but I actually reckon it's a skill to be able to do that. Yep. No, thanks for sharing. It's great. Um, now I do. We, we are big on the uh, the podcast game, Tommy Sheridan. We we have linked up to do a couple. Obviously, we did one with Dunks earlier in the year on the on the NFL. We've got 
business and aces or aces in business, I should say, coming up, which is, is pretty exciting. But the two boys here, mm. which we love, are dabbling in the out space. Out of nowhere as well. Out of absolutely fucking nowhere. Up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just so give us a, whose idea was this and, and how's this come about? Because the listeners here, on and off pod, what are we, three eps have gone live? We just filmed our fourth. Fourth today. So, so by the time yeah. by the time this comes out, I reckon the fourth will be out. So everyone that's listening to this, get over to that, adds in and dunks and take us through what it's about boys please well, it's funny because the first person to sort of tell us that we should do it was our first guest so steph martin, steph martin. oh really very yeah. elusive steph martin why did it, what what in his headspace made him tell you that well he watched the channel seven thing yeah. you know those channel seven things that you do together like oh, teammates pre-season kind of teams yeah, yeah. Yep. so we we did one and hung a bit of shit on each other and had a laugh and he was <laughs> like you boys should do a podcast <laughs> no way and we were just yep. like oh yeah and then last year happened, COVID, whatnot. So we yep. sort of got delayed a little bit, but we were talking about it. And then this year it got off the ground. And yeah, after we filmed, literally after we filmed that one with you you boys, yep, yep. I reckon a couple of weeks later we were on. First app. Fuck. Right. So it's, you can turn them around quickly, eh? From idea to production. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it can happen quick. And then all of a sudden you're three, four episodes in, you're like, fuck. Yeah. Well, it's something, like you said, it's something that we've spoken about. We just needed to find the right time. And we would have done it last year, but COVID obviously affected that. And then we needed to find someone to help us with it. And. Yeah, and it all just happened really quickly once we started. Once we were like, okay, are we going to do this? Yeah, yeah. we're going to do then this. Then we got a logo. It literally and just like, happened. It's a sick logo. Yeah. It's yeah. sick. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Who, who's done that up? They it's a, like cartoon. a cartoon. There's, kind there's of a cartoonist that, that one of our, our producer, Jack, he he um, he um knows the cartoonist. He knows the cartoonist, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was like, oh, we'll get him to do it. And they did it, and it's unreal. It's, it's epic. It's funny because I saw it and I said, New York Jets? <laughs> yeah, he messaged me. He's like, oh, you're a Jets, you're a Jets man. I was like, no. Oh, mate, like, everything's perfect, but that Jets, Jets. hat. <laughs> I nearly told him to rub it out. Oh, really? Yeah. So what, what's kind of the content? Like, it's a variety of content, I assume, but it's what's sort of your angles of what you guys are trying to deliver out of it, I guess? Yeah, well, I mean, it's probably about everything. Like, life, showing everyone that we are normal human beings. Like, we talk about mental health, but also throughout the season, it's going to be interesting to see how we go on our ups yeah, and downs. and fuck yeah. Yeah. Just trying to give people more of an insight into yeah. what we're like as people, but also, you know, what goes on in the wider community. Like, yeah. we're, we're paying attention. Like, we talked about the Queensland floods a couple of weeks ago, yeah. like, things yeah. like that. Shane Warne last week and yeah. how sad that was and just being vulnerable and showing, yeah, I guess how how we are as characters yeah. I, and, and I, people. I think that's the main thing. That was the main gist that we wanted to get out of it and be as authentic as we can be and people can get a sense of the people that we are. And yeah. I took great – Motivation. I don't know what the potty's called, but Kalen Ponga does a podcast. Uh huh. I don't know what it's called, but I know. So the reason why I know it is he's managed by the same manager. Actually, him and I have the same manager. Right, right. Um, and he has very he has a lot of success on his podcast. And literally, all he does is him and his two mates. They just talk rubbish. <laughs> That's all they do. And apparently, it. it has a huge, huge following. Um, they've you know they've got branding off it. They've had sponsorships for it, and it's something like oh well, Josh and I, you know, we're we bands it pretty well and we, we, we have opinions on a lot of topics and whatnot. Why don't we try that? And yeah, that's kind of where it's branched off to, but we want to be able to add guests as well. And which I saw. So is that because you obviously had yeah. Steph Martin on, but you hadn't had anyone before. So you're going to nah. just sort of well, compliment both. We are, but yeah, yeah, but I don't, I know he doesn't want this either, but we don't really want it just to be footy guests. We want it to be fucking oath. That's yeah. mine. That's yeah. what we've yeah. we're in the yep. same boat yep. here. Cause yep. it's so easy to bucket yourself into that. Exactly. And, and you don't want footy that. and, and, and he like networks as well as anybody, so he knows. <laughs> oh, yes. The yeah. head clash is good. Is he? He there knows we go. Tommy's good. <laughs> 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 we love that. So, yeah, yeah so that's pro- kind of the gist. We're, we're excited fun, about how it? it is. It's it good is. to be yourself. Yeah. Like yeah. In footy clubs, early days, maybe now, they're letting you talk more and be yep. yourself, but I felt like they owned your opinion. They own, like you go to a press conference, I didn't do many, but <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you cannot say this. Couldn't agree more, Tom. You Tommy. cannot do that, but you've you got, to, you got to touch on this. Yeah? There's still, you know, there is still elements of that. Is, is that changing? Is Absolutely. That still, oh, no, it's it's still getting there. better. But Yeah, but it's getting, okay. but what these podcasts will help is players will be able to go there and, and, and you know, and swear when they want to, when yeah. they're vulnerable. Control so they, the narrative. Yeah, control the narrative. Instead of saying what the media guy tells you to say. So yep. when you go to a press conference, when you're watching on the news, 
you know that not, it's literally it's a straight bat mm. and they're not hitting anything but a little dot ball <laughs> and everything's like you know what do you think of his game he's had 30 and kicked 5 yeah. thought he played his role tonight like it's so boring yeah I fucking hate that I'm it's the so big oh, that's why I love yeah. Curios yeah. Well, that's, oh, that's why I love him and, the, and the, American, the American persona they love it don't they that's, yeah, well that's yeah. what it is yeah. it's individuals make sports yep. great you know sometimes Look, I feel like yeah yep. AFL's sensitive well, how good is it watching Russell Westbrook do his interviews oh, even now oh, I love him because he's copping it more than anybody in the world I know I feel for him, but I just love how brutal he is. Like he actually said something sad the other day, which which yeah, made me, sad, it, yeah. it brought perspective on like what's going on when they got. Was that, that about his family? Yeah, yeah. about yeah. his son. How his Joe. son is absolutely obsessed with yeah. like calling himself Noah Westbrook. Yeah. Instead of writing Noah on his school pages, he, he just puts Westbrook. And he yeah. goes, you know, I'm turning up to Crypto.com Arena, and everyone's called me Westbrook. Yeah, yeah. It's like yep. affecting my it's legacy, shocking, and my it? family, yeah, and yep. it's like puts perspective on. Yeah, it does, doesn't me. it? Yep. Kyrie cops it as well, which yeah. I don't, I don't understand it. Like, I don't know why people. Put all that negative, you know, like all that negative talk on the people when they're actually paying to see them. Yeah. I mean, I get stupid. it in a sense where maybe it's a UFC fighter and they hate him, yeah. they hate to love him, you know, but consistently, consistently, like just don't say nothing. And the worst thing is people who have like just a general fan, and this goes with footy as well, mainly when reporters and whatnot talk rubbish about a player, the general then believe that. They believe the general population then believe that about the player, Correct. and it may not even like not sorry not may it isn't true most of the time it isn't true and but the public because they hear it from a from an expert oh yeah no nah, he must be a shit kick or he must be a shit bloke or whatever it is mm. and that's probably the most frustrating thing so if you were to ask someone now about we're talking about Russell Westbrook I reckon people have already forgotten how good he was. Well, he's still, I still think he's a star. He'll, he'll move someone next year and go back to his normal ways. Yeah. But doubles. people forget yeah. how good he is because of the narrative now of how shit he's been playing. He can't shoot, he can't do anything, which is probably the most frustrating thing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's fucking, man, it's a, you boys know better than anyone. It's a hard thing to play eight, nine out of ten, of ten every game. Oh. If everyone could do it. Not like, one out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Back yeah. to the pod. What's the plan with it? Is it once a week? You're going to drop an episode yeah, once a week? Yeah, we're trying once a week. Perfect. Yep. And yeah. what so days are you trying to drop them? Thursdays. Later in the week, yeah. Yep. Thursday, yeah. So our next one's dropping Wednesday before round one. So this week. Yeah. Beautiful. And you um, guys are on Spotify, Apple. Mm -hmm. Spotify, Apple. There you yep. go. Everyone. Get behind. Please do. We love it. We're big advocates. Yeah, We've spoken about like everyone with a platform, particularly you guys. It's great to just see another side. It and good. it's going to start to be, I honestly think this space is what people are going to tune into more, the next generation, because it's not as scripted. It's more fun. Yep. Back to the pod. I've tuned in. So there's a little bit of a, there's a lot of competition. <laughs> but, you know, and and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talk, which I love. But I reckon, this is my tip to you boys, I want some video element yeah. where we can- We are. Okay, great. I want to see these things put to test, maybe once a week, yep. and the challenge count ticks over during the end of the year, but there needs to be a punishment yep. at the end of the year. I don't know what it is. Can you give me insight into I one like of these challenges time. or what what's going on well, here? What happens is they'll just say basketball, and then one of the boys will go, I'm a better shooter. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's an easy one. We don't even worry about it. Oh, like, <laughs> weights, weights. Oh, oh yeah. okay. I'll be heavier. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. all right, yeah. get yeah. the bench press, film it, and push that bar, and right. let's see who actually Yeah, let's strong. film it now. Oh, <laughs> 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 Well, no, that's that's exciting. As I said, on and off pod, we are going to do, before we wrap up this podcast, I do want to give a, a quick plug to our good mate over here, Rick's Eyewear, Tommy Sheridan. As as always, there is a discount code UNLACE. What are we, what are we giving? 20, is it 20% off? Yeah, we can bump it up. Isn't, isn't there that's an right. end of financial year yeah. sale? Sale on right now. I reckon by the time, by the time yeah, this yeah, comes out, if it's still there, get, get on it because it is uh, a luxury sunglass brand. The, the Melbourne Storm Boys are loving it. They Big shout out to you. everyone. There's been a few people use your code, so I really appreciate it. And um, Legends. Yeah, we'll have to do something for them. I'll organise something. But, yeah, big thanks to you and everyone that listens. Beautiful. Now, one more question to you boys, and then I want to get everyone's pick for the uh, winner of the East and West uh, in the NBA. But do you guys go in at your sort of – established um, states of your career. Do you guys go into seasons with sort of individual goals or yep. do you kind of less cloudy the better? What sort of your viewpoints on that is? Yeah, not goals. I don't have a goal. I just want to – what I want to improve. So it's not mm. like if you're meaning like I'll win the Brownlow or something. It's nothing like that. Yeah. What I want to be able to do, in, which I believe will take me to the next level, is I just want to be able to hit the scoreboard more. Yeah. And I feel like I have the capability to do that. Well, the grand final. Well, point, yeah. point in state. Man. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I have the capability to do that. I just need to be able to back myself a little bit more. Yeah. So That's a that's great goal. That's literally Honestly, what I want to do I reckon more this year. I reckon simple, the simple yeah. like that is more effective, yep. to be And honest. you talk about midfielders, when they branch themselves off from other midfielders, it's generally when they hit the <coughs> scoreboard more. So I find myself I have a lot of opportunities as – 
either just don't do it or I choose not to have a shot, whatever it is, where I just want to be able to back myself a lot more this year and be able to do that. I'll give you a polish here, but I wish I had your speed, right? If you've got quick, if you've got quick feet, yeah. I don't think yeah, you yeah. can't get tackled. So go for it, mate. And instinct takes over when you've got that yep. mindset. I agree with when you, you're mate. When you second guess, I've got to pass. If you just know you're inside 40, yep. you might burn a couple early, but you'll you'll see it, good yep. hands. But, mate, I reckon you'll kick a few more with that. I mate. agree with you, Tommy. What about you, Dunks? Mine's similar. It's not... Like I want to hit the scoreboard, but I want to use my legs more out of stoppage yep. and be a bit stronger with the footy. I I'd always kick it a lot out of like straight away. I'll just think about kicking it straight away. He's, yep. he's been on to me a lot and all my teammates have just around taking a few more steps. I'm pretty big, so I can't, you know, get yeah, tackled yeah. easily. So yep. I'm a lot stronger over the footy and then use my legs. I can give handballs to Adzi and then he can kick oh, it off. So he's giving you that so he can oh, yeah. get more, more receipts. Every, every week receipts. he sprays me, mate, down <laughs> on the field. So oh, I, I love missed that. two handballs where he could have kicked the goal. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's, that's good. Now, Tommy, let's go east and west predictions whilst we're in the thick of it coming into playoffs. I just, I just got it up before. I mean, I like, I like the Suns. Um, yeah, you've been, you've been big oh, raffling. I've already, I'm set on mine. I, don't need, I think the go Suns on. will win the west. Yep. Because I said of, they've got the team to get there and then they have the the Devon Booker star power. That's my philosophy. And I think Miami will Miami. win the east. Yep. So just for everyone listening on the east, you've got Miami, Philly, the Bucks, the Bulls, Boston, Cleveland, another good team. And then you got the Raptors, the Nets, Atlanta, and Charlotte. I love watching Charlotte. Oh, actually. Charlotte, Charlotte is so enjoyable. That's because every game they play, it's 140 yeah, points yeah, against yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no defense. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Um, ball I, at the I point. think I think the Bucks on that side. I think um, I think they're hard to write off, aren't they? I think they'll get back there. I think Miami just don't have enough star. What power about Memphis? Seat. There's a bit of there's a bit of like uh, everyone's roughies Memphis. I don't reckon they're going to go too deep. No, I don't think you so. Reckon they, don't you reckon they'll Golden go? State? What about Golden State? Yeah, I can now be right. I think they're, they're, they're in the same category as Bucks to me. You mm. just can't rule them out I want because of the Draymond's star power. back. They're he will. Back. Yeah, he's got a. He's scheduled to come. They said it the other day. So, but will he be back. like? Hopefully, he's back to his, how yeah. hard it is going through the finals. Yeah, so I reckon. Yep. Oh, I mean, yeah, if he's right and Curry and Thompson James Wiseman just, comes back too. Yeah, oh, yeah. what a player! It's going to be great. I can't wait. Thanks. Thanks. What about you? You're you're going to Phoenix as well. Everyone seems to jump yeah. on there. Phoenix, like Tommy said, good team. Yeah. I think they're pretty solid. I did get on the, the 76ers when Harden got oh, traded. Oh, that's right. Oh, I put a bet on. I put a bet on. I put a bet on. They were paying like close to 10 bucks. Oh, well, MB. They'll, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll be solid. They'll be right yeah. up there, absolutely. Yeah. They're going through a bit of a lull at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, They're probably working out how to play. If that clicks, chemistry. If those two click yeah. and they get defense right in that team, right. then offense, you know, is just going to fly. So, we, the Nets... It, the Nets is going to be so fun to watch. I can't wait. Oh, yeah, I can't I'll, be, wait I'll be going for like I'll be cheering them on because yeah. I think Durant, Irving, our boy Benny, you know, Paddy, even like Curry's there now. If Drum, I th- it's like a, I'd love him to have one more tall. But Drum, me too. The big boy. Yeah. He, he's got well, I think I think I, I think they fixed a lot of their issues just by getting Ben Simmons yep. yeah. with their defense because he can guard multiple positions. But what yeah. do, what do you do with Ben Simmons? Do you make him the, the prominent nah. ball handler, or nah. do you play him you know the two you know and you let get him Kyrie there for defense? It? I think yeah, with KD, defense. Kyrie there, even Seth, Curry, and Patty Mills, <laughs> these guys can shoot and ho- handle the ball. Yeah, let him handle the ball, Ben Simmons, if he wants. But his points should all be put back points, or he, he gets an opportunistic rebound, scores it, whatever even, it is. Even driving, because if he's one-on-one all that, and yep. then feeds or goes to the ring, it's going to be very hard to defend that whole team. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to watch I feel like it's all set up for the Nets and 76ers to go at it at some point. That'd be, like, yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd gonna, be very... Well, imagine if that's a playoff. Epic. They, sm- <laughs> they, smoked they smoked him the other day, but it's all set up. Like, it's like... That would be epic. Oh, mate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, that's a wrap, guys. I want to thank uh, Dunks and Adzi for coming in. You guys are absolute legends. On and off pod. Get around it, everyone. It's going to be a great show. Tommy Sheridan, the king, mate. Aces in business. Tommy talks. It's all happening for you, mate. We, uh, thank you for coming in as well. It's been a pleasure. It's good to be here. Absolute wrap. Beautiful. Thanks, Thanks guys. You. Thanks, mate.